This is Dr. Holt. In this video, I'm going to talk about how to set up a new axis when you have a mass that's on inclined plane. Here I have a 5 kilogram mass. It's on an inclined plane. It has an angle of 39 degrees off the horizontal. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set up a new axis system. I'm going to extend this thing down a little bit. And what I usually do is I draw a line that is parallel to the incline line here. And I'm going to draw one down like this. Okay, I'll move this around so it's approximately in the middle. Okay, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to just shade it. Not shade it, but I'm going to de-emphasize it. So there's my axis, okay? first. Now, next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to establish where my x-axis is going to be. I'm going to let this be my x-axis here. <clears throat> Anything that goes this way, I'm going to let it to be positive x here. Anything that goes up here, I'm going to let to be positive y. <clears throat> okay, the next thing I like to do is I'm going to take the force of gravity. We know if we draw a free body diagram at this point, it's going to look, and this is without, without being tilted here first, I'll talk about that. It's going to go up here like this. Force of gravity is going to come down. Let me get a vector force of gravity is going to come down here like that. Your norm is, normal is going to go back up like that. <clears throat> we can make the assumption if we want there could possibly be some type of frictional force. We'll make the frictional force to go up like this. So we will label this as the force of gravity here. Again that is going to be the earth onto my object, or you can put the five kilograms, whatever you prefer. This would be my normal force. <clears throat> and this would be the incline onto the five kilograms. And we'll make this be our friction. And we can make it be kinetic or static, because we really don't know what this object's doing. We'll pretend right now that this object is in rest. <clears throat> If the object is in rest, then we'll make that static friction. And again, that is going to be the incline on to the 5 kilograms. All right, that is a non-tilted free body diagram. <clears throat> what you notice here is this vector is perpendicular, which is going to run along our y-axis. This one here is parallel. It runs along our x-axis, OK? Again, I'm off a little bit in the tilt, but I think you understand what I'm saying. The force of gravity is going to come straight down. So we're going to break it into comp two components. All right, what I like to do in this case is, and again, I do this all the time, even though I've done these problems hundreds of times. I draw my force of gravity coming down like this. I draw its component, the one that is perpendicular to the incline, going down like this. I draw this one like this. I will extend this a little bit so they do meet. Okay, at this point right here, I will have a right angle here. Get my pen, sorry. Right here, I will have a, that's a right angle right there. <clears throat> now, if this is 39 degrees here, this is going to be 39 degrees here. And again, you can prove that with just some geometry. All right, this is going to be my force of gravity here. And that's going to be the mass times 9.8 meters per second squared, or if you're not used to using 9.8 meters per second squared, you can make it into 9.8 newtons per kilogram. All right, this vector here is going to be the force of gravity times the sine of 39 degrees. That's this vector here. And this one here is going to be the force of gravity times the cosine 39 degrees. All right, I'm going to move this over to get it out of the way and make this a force gravity. All right, <clears throat> again, I like to do that so I have everything oriented. Now I'm ready to draw my tilted free body diagram. So I will come here, draw this vector coming straight down like that. First thing too, I'm going to go ahead and draw my dot and make it red right in the middle. <clears throat> now I'm going to label this vector here is going to be this one right here. It's going to be the force of gravity 
Okay, I'm going to make it in, I'm just going to call it a Y component. Okay, and it's going to be 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times a cosine of 39. So I'm going to grab my calculator real quick. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 5. Sorry, cosine of 39. <clears throat> and that's going to give me a value of 38.08. 38.08 newtons. All right, we're going to go ahead and show this one here. That's force of gravity times the sine of 39. And I'm going to call that the force of gravity in the x. And I'm going to come back here and put the vector on here. And again, <clears throat> that is going to be the 5 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared. Again, if you haven't studied acceleration yet, acceleration gravity, you can call it 5, excuse me, 9.8, multiply it by 9.8 newtons per kilogram. I'm going to take 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 39 degrees. And that's going to give me a value of 30.84 newtons. <clears throat> All right, we will draw. This is going to be my normal going back up. Again, that is the force of normal. And that is going to be the incline onto the 5. And in this case, it's got to be 38.08 newtons because I have no other forces. <clears throat> All right, now, if this object is not moving, then I would have to have the static friction to at least, excuse me, 30, it'd have to come back and match that. So my static friction <clears throat> in this case would equal to 30.84 newtons. All right, <clears throat> now, <clears throat> with this problem, <clears throat> excuse me, if, for example, let's say, let's say that we knew what the mu value was, say the mu of S coefficient of static friction in this case was, so let's make it 0.40, for example, okay? We know by definition that the static friction max it could be would equal to the normal force, which in this case is going to be the 38.08 newtons. I would multiply that by 0 0.40 in this case. 38.08 times 0.4. And again, I'm just throwing out this out as a scenario. That would give me 15.23 newtons here. All right, if that was the case, then I would come back here and I would show this in the free body diagram as only being able to, being able to produce 15.23 newtons. Now the problem about this is you have 30.84 that is going, force going down the x-axis this way. Statics going to, can only produce 15.23 newtons. Immediately that would disappear and kinetic friction would take over because this object is moving. It is accelerating down the incline. So I would have to calculate the kinetic friction here. And again, I would have to know in this case what mu of k was to find out what the kinetic friction is. And by definition, the kinetic friction is going to equal to the normal force again in this case with 30.08 times mu of k. That would be my kinetic friction. All right, so this is how you set these up on an inclined plane. Again, you can draw one free body, body excuse me, one free body diagram that's not tilted like this. Again, I like to take my, my force of gravity, I break it into the two components. I like to draw the vector coming down, then I like to draw the vector that's perpendicular to the surface, 
and I draw the other vector, this parallel to the surface. Notice I go tail, tail, head, tail, head, head. This shows me the direction of the components of gravity. And the thing to note is this is, if this is 39, 39 degrees, then you will have 39 degrees right at this location too. Once you have these components defined, you can put them back into your free body diagram where you had a tilted axis where the x-axis in this case is parallel to the surface and the y-axis is perpendicular to the surface. All right, and remember, static friction can only reach a maximum value. It can go from zero up to a maximum value, while kinetic friction will hold basically a constant as long as the two surfaces are basically uh, between them that have no changes as far as like the roughness. And then in that case, the, the uh, kinetic friction could change. But in most cases, you're going to see in physics that you're going to get a mu k that's a set value. Mu s is a set value. Set value. Anyway, as a short video, I hope this is useful of how to tilt the axes on an inclined plane and set up your free body diagrams. As always, I wish you the best of luck.